there's three places to charge a Tesla in 2023. Here, here, and here. I'm currently sitting at a public charging station waiting to charge. Haven't been able to charge all day long. This might be something you face as a Tesla owner, or if you're thinking of getting a Tesla, this is something you could face if you're gonna rely on public charging stations. I park this car in my garage every single night, but I don't charge it in my garage. Why, you may ask? Well, I work at a place that has a free charge point charging station. I got this Tesla back in April of 2023. It's been about two months now. And I had no intention of never charging it in my garage. I own a high-speed charger, but I just kept charging here at work. And it got me from A to B with plenty of range. So I just figured, how long can I make this go? Well, I think I finally met my end here. I have 16 miles of charge left. I keep getting alerts that it may be harmful for my battery. So I'm gonna go home and charge. But I wanted to show you for two months of only charging at a public charging station, this is how much electricity it took to charge my car. And I'll also show you how much gas savings I had during that time period. Then I'm gonna charge it from basically less than 5% all the way to 100% because the Tesla battery that I have recommends charging to 100% at least once a week. I'm gonna charge to 100% and I'll see how much electricity it took to get to that charge level and how much it cost me here in the state of Utah for one charge from basically empty to full. And then I wanna talk about the three types of charging that you can do in 2023, which is at these public charging stations, at home, and also at a super charging station. Let's start at home. This is the place I think you should be charging because this is how this car is designed to work. It's a lot like your cell phone. You drive all day, you come home, you plug in, you get to 100% or whatever you set your battery range at depending on what year Tesla you have and you drive and you repeat every night you're charging. That way it feels like you wake up just like your cell phone, you wake up and you're ready to go. There's no need to go to a charging station or have the inconvenience of a gas station. You do it all at home. And some people have gone to great lengths to wire their home to have NEMA 1450 adapters or higher level charging, somewhere in the 20 to 35 miles an hour range. And that works for them. And I would even say too, you don't need to buy the special Tesla wall adapter that looks nice and charges your car because you can buy adapters for the, the mobile kit that gives you a very similar output in electricity. And that's the best way to go. I would also say a very underrated way to charge, would not recommend this for your primary charging, but you can just plug it in any old outlet and overnight you get 50, 60, 70 miles depending on how long it's charged. And that could in some cases get you from your place of work and back home to plug in. It wouldn't allow you to do a lot of leisure activity, but you could get from work and back on just a regular wall outlet. And I think sometimes people don't think that's an option and it really shouldn't be for all of your charging. But if that's all you have access to every night and then you hit a couple public charging stations, that could very well work for you over a long period of time. The other place you can charge is a public charging station. And as you can tell in my current situation, I'm waiting to charge, I cannot charge. This is becoming less and less reliable, even in places like Utah, like in California, you're guaranteed to wait. It's very difficult to get into. I don't see how in the state of California, you can solely rely on public charging stations and Tesla supercharging. That sounds worse than going to a gas station. I would not recommend that, but even in Utah, I've owned a Tesla for over four years now. And even in this state, you cannot rely on public charging stations as your primary source of charging. Whereas back in 2019 and even 2020, that was very doable. I remember back in the early days of the pandemic, now this is not a normal time period for us uh, and hopefully we never go through it again, but every single Sunday morning, I would go and drop my car off at a public charging station because I lived really close to one at the time. And I'd come back later, no one was ever there and it was free. So it made a whole lot of sense. 
That doesn't seem feasible now because there's so many more electric cars, including Teslas. There are so many more electric cars in 2023 than there were when I first got a Tesla back in 2019. There's more demand than ever. I'm seeing ribbings all the time now here in Utah. The demand is high for public charging and it makes it more difficult to rely on that day to day, week to week, month to month. Uh, it's, it's certainly nice when it works, but I think a lot of times you'll be doing what I'm doing, sitting in here, desperate for a charge to get home when if you had just charged in your garage or at your place, uh, you know, if you don't have a garage, but you have access to an outlet at your house, it, whether it be outside parked in the garage or, uh, I mean, but if you're buying a Tesla, I hope you've got a garage. This is not in my estimation in 2023, a reliable, uh, way of charging. The last way that you can charge, and this is especially difficult in Utah if you don't live near a Tesla supercharger, is just that, at a Tesla supercharger. I don't think it's good for your battery to be relying on this. I also think it's kind of expensive now. Like if you were grandfathered into one of those free supercharging deals, I don't think it's really an economical way to go. I think you'd be much better off charging at home, even if it were in a trickle charger situation, getting four miles an hour, and it would be relying on a Tesla supercharger. It's expensive, it's bad for your battery. A supercharging station was designed for really one purpose. And I think it's important to, to realize what the best use intention for an electric car is if you're thinking of buying one. It's designed to be charged at home. Like you charge it every night and you go about your business. The supercharger is meant for travel. Like if you're going on a long distance trip and you need to pop from a couple stops, like for me, I'm in Utah. Let's say I wanna to go to California, which I've done many times. I'll link a video to a recent trip I took in a Tesla to California. I'm charging along the way. St. George, Las Vegas, other destinations to get to Southern California. That's what it's designed to do. It's not designed to be a every other day, every three days, you stop and fill up type of thing. That's not good for the battery. That puts tremendous stress on the charging network, not what it's designed to do. So uh, in review, if you are thinking of buying a Tesla, I highly recommend it. If you can charge it at home, that is ideal. You can get by with periodic charges at a public charging station and a supercharger, but still in 2023, many 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 years into the creation of the tesla company they're thriving better than ever but the original design is still what it's meant to do charge at home drive around town and that's the way it's going to go so i'm going to see if i can get a little bit of charge to get home and then tonight i'll plug in and i'll show you how long it takes to get in a 2023 model 3 rear wheel drive to get from sub five percent all the way up to 100 percent, and how much it cost me here in the state of utah for a one-time charge, so I'll see you at my house. Full disclosure here, I was able to charge a little bit at work before I plugged in here. It says I have about eight hours until I get a full charge, so I'll tell you exactly how much uh, electricity it took to get to 100%, how much it cost me. It's my first time charging this thing in my garage. Uh, it's bittersweet. I wanted to see how long I could go. I made it two months, which is a lot longer than I thought that I would, but this is, this is exactly how you're supposed to do it. And uh, let's get some information when it's all said and done. All right, it's the next day. I finished charging up to 100% yesterday. Got a haircut this morning. So I look a little different, but. So here's the uh, stats from last night's first charge in my garage. It, was, it took 58 kilowatt hours to charge my car to 100%. It was about 230 miles of range. And it took about seven and a half to eight hours to go from, uh, you know, it was about 35 miles of range when I got home and then charged it all the way up to 271 miles. So, and in, in Utah, my electric plan, I'm about 
12 cents a kilowatt hour, a hair under $6. So I don't drive that much. So I wouldn't need to do what I did last night every single day. So I, I mean, I would, I, in a future video, I'll charge exclusively, exclusively in my garage for a month and we'll see how many miles I drive and how much it costs. So you guys have an idea, but I'm definitely going to be less than $50 a month based on my driving habits. Um, I, I've had the car for almost three months now and I'm barely over 2000 miles. So I don't drive that often. So that gives you a little idea. Obviously it's, I'd say, you know, depending on the state you live in, it's going to be a little different and how much it costs. But for me, it makes all the sense in the world to only be charging in the garage because it's so cheap. So there you go. There's a, uh, there's a little recap and experience on how much it costs right now for me to charge in my garage and kind of the charging situation for for Tesla owners or if you're thinking about getting a Tesla hopefully this is a little informative on what you can expect so thanks for watching as always guys I appreciate it for those of you who have subscribed I uh, I appreciate it and until the next time take care